Now then everyone and welcome to this week's video on the Panasonic S1's inbuilt stabilisation features. Now you join me outside because it's too much of a beautiful day to be inside to be honest so I thought I'd bring the cameras outside and um, with it I've got lots of birds making a whole lot of noise so I hope that um, they aren't too distracting while I'm filming this. So yeah, ultimately this week what I want to test out is the Panasonic S1 stabilization features. I don't have a Panasonic S1 lens or Panasonic uh, Lumix lens with inbuilt stabilization. So this is just purely looking at the onboard stabilization available on the S1 with the Sigma 50mm 1.4 lens. So let's get straight into it. Now on the S1 there are three different modes for stabilization. There is the in-body stabilization which is of the sensor. There's also a video boost and an e-stabilization feature that you can turn on. So three in total. And like I say, not including a lens if you have a lens that's also another way that you can add some more stabilization to it so when i took the camera out i've got to also mention that i did take it out with the cage which does have a side handle so a lot of the footage that i captured was not just the, me holding the camera but me holding the camera with the cage and i would argue this does give it a little bit more give you a little bit more stability as well so those walking shots you may get a similar result or yours might be slightly different if you're not using a cage now, when I reviewed the footage, I noticed that there's still quite a lot of movement on my left and right um, sort of body roll, shall we say, while I'm walking. And I think if I was to do this again, I would probably use a shoulder rig similar to this. And this would just help me lock in that left and right action with it being weighted at the back as well, taking some of the strain out of my arms. Now one thing I also want to note is I am running the 1.2 firmware update on the S1 and not the latest 1.5. I'm not sure if 1.5 has any extra added stabilization additions to it uh, but if there are just be aware that this is in-body stabilization using firmware 1.2. So in a second, I'm going to show the footage and um, yeah, and then tell you a little bit about my thoughts once we've watched it together. So without further ado, let's get started with that. Okay, so from watching the footage, I want to know from you guys in the comments section what you thought of it. Did, what, did it come out ex as you expected or did it come out better or worse? Have you had any better results maybe with a lens with in-body stabilization? It'd be really great to hear your feedback on that. One thing I found was the video boost feature wasn't for me usable when I looked at it up close on the monitor, uh, especially for both the uneven and concrete surfaces that I was walking on. 
I felt that there was some little odd jitters appearing here and then in the footage, whereas just the stabilised sensor, uh, image stabilisation through the sensor only, I found that that had a little bit nicer roll off, especially on the uneven terrain. Uh, but that's just my own personal preference, you might feel differently. Generally, I was quite happy with just the um, image stabilisation from the sensor, or the censored stabilisation. Um, but when I combined all three, I've quite, I, that footage was quite usable as well. You do get a little bit of a crop when you add e-stabilisation, and some would say that it's no different to just adding a warp stabilisation uh, in post anyway, but the fact that it's doing it in camera does save you a little bit of time, and then I suppose you could add it always in post again and have more layers added. I also tried to demonstrate all of those exact shots with some warps at stabilization um, using Premiere Pro. And again, this was just using Premiere Pro. I've heard that DaVinci's stabilization is also quite powerful. So I could have also used that to stabilize the footage, but I just used Premiere Pro. But in general, I think, you know, the, the stabilization isn't there to replace a gimbal. So I wasn't expecting shots that would rival a gimbal. In fact, adding a gimbal and the in-body stabilization, you're probably gonna get some extremely nice, usable footage. But just in general, if I was to, you know, probably if I was to do this in a professional context, I would film the um, tracking of the subject in 60 frames per second, which means that you have a little bit of extra uh, slowdown in post, which combined with all that image stabilization and post stabilization you could do, you're probably gonna get something uh, really close to being usable. So in general, I wasn't surprised by the footage that I got. Um, will I use it? 100%. I think the fact that you can get away without taking a gimbal out with you, which is a, you know, a lot of extra heavy kit, that's a massive bonus for me. Um, but I think if I was to continue practicing my movements and walking and also using more equipment to help stabilize it, I could have got more from the results that I got. So yeah, hopefully you found this video interesting and as I say, when I do update to 1.5, if I see any improvements on stabilisation, I'll keep you guys posted. But as always, thank you for watching this week's video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.